podcast network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. All Hit Radio. Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. It is Tuesday, September the 29th in the year 2015. And tomorrow night we have our big debate with Michael Horn and Stanton Friedman debating the Billy Meyer UFO case. That's tomorrow from 8 p.m. until 10 p.m. Eastern, right here and around the world on the Exxon Radio Show, brought to you by the Exxon Broadcast Network, Starcom Radio Network, Digital Broadcast Network, and the Digital Satellite Network. Worldwide toll-free, our telephone number is 1-800-610-7035. My email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And you can listen to the Exxon live feed, 724-365, including our show Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. until midnight at one site, www.exxoneradiotv.com. Exo Nation, my guest this hour is Adele Marie. She is an internationally known author, visionary messenger, clairvoyant medium, channeler, and metaphysical teacher. As a gifted visionary medium with over 40 years of experience, Adele Marie works with what is known as the sixth sense, adding to adding that to her incredible gift of seeing with her eyes wide open everywhere she goes with everyone, everything she sees and meets. Her published work include The Visionary Messenger, a guided journal, along with her soon-to-be-released back-to-back books titled The Teacher's Manual and The Angelic Wise Ones. Her numerous recorded guided meditations CDs include The Beautiful Walking with the Blessed Mother, Know Thyself, and Keeper of the Crystal Temple. Adele has uh, has had this way and uh, about what her what that makes her. You want to know, let me see what, this doesn't make sense, guys. Adele has this way about her, I see, that makes you want to know more than what you're getting with her. She is amazingly accurate, and her loving compassion and laughter is infectious. She is unlike anyone that you've ever met, and probably that you ever will meet. I know from this from my experience talking to her for a short period of time we went on air. Her website, Angelic Wise Ones. Dot com. Joining me now is Adele Marie. And Adele, welcome to the X Zone. Hi, Rob. Thank you. Um, good, good evening. Yay. I'm yeah. excited. All right. One, two, three. Uh, we'll both yay, okay? One, two, okay. three. Yay. Yay. <laughs> there we go. All right. There we go. That, uh, <laughs> uh, there we go. That was the Adele Marie Abridged Fan Club. Um, first, right. first of all, tell us how you got started and all this great work you're doing and the people that you're just opening up and lightening by your teaching. Oh, my goodness. This, um, I started years and years and years and years ago. Uh, my grandfather, when I was around mm-hmm. four years old, opened the door to spirit for me. And, you know, over the years, you sit there and you develop and you work with spirit. And I, and I just got to the part where there was so many people had so many questions everywhere. You know, how do you do this? Can I do this? Mm -hmm. I'm having experiences. This is what it's like. And I just sat there one day and I said, okay, we need to teach some classes on this. You know, we need to sit there and and help people understand it so we can take some fear, you know, out of them and and let them see how, you know, they're just a a beautiful person waking up, you know, in this life. Why do you think think there's so much fear attached to it? So much fear uh, because there's so many people out there and they're teaching so many different ways and so many different things. And, um, you know, anybody that sits there and says, well, you know, um, yeah, I kind of like, like feel something and see something, but I know it's scary. It's just something that, you know, society has been teaching for a long time. And then you sit there and you have people just coming out of the woodwork and um, 
trying to get everybody to do something, but it, to me it's all about fear-based because they just keep them in that fear to keep on coming back. You know, it's just like if I can sit there and, and place fear in you, then you're mm-hmm. going to want to keep coming back to sit there and learn more and more and more. So, so. Bas- so basically I would imagine it's a form of bullying. Mm, I, well, I don't know. I guess you could say that, but at the same time, um, mm-hmm. bullies aren't really nice, so... Um, well, neither well, neither not, is someone who would <laughs> who would talk to you about fear and uh, scare the bejesus out of you just to make an extra buck. Well, that's true too, because yeah. you know if you put it in bullying, you can also put it in abuse. Right. And um, and and a lot of people sit there and they abuse people left, right, and center in this profession. And um, my job is to sit there and really show people, you know, this is the true way of everything. You know, if I if so, if I have a client that comes sees me, I always sit there and tell them, look, you never have to come back and see me again. I will never tell you to come back and see me. I'll never email you, call you up, and say, oh, you need to come back and you know, uh, I need to talk to you. I need right. to like tell you more. So um, so yeah, it does work along that line in a way. How can people know a good psychic or know a good reader or from from someone who's decent, sincere, and and is doing it for the right reason? Um, you have to do a lot of homework, yeah. right? First off, you have to understand why, you know, you would like to go see someone. Mm-hmm. Then you have to do some homework. Just Google them, talk to your friends, see what they're like. Um, you know, read everything you can about them. I know, like, on my website, I write it everything out. I don't want anybody um, coming to see me unless they really know what they're getting themselves into, mm-hmm. you know? And I always let everybody know it's not what you want to need, want to hear, it's what you need to hear. So they really need to do that, and they really need to sit there and ask friends. You know, who did you have a, a good session yeah. with? Did, you know, did they tell you anything fearful? Was it all promising? Was it really, did you get something good out of it? So I guess the, uh, the short pick of the straw would be, in this case, if you are being given uh, a reading that is intimidation, intimidating or fearful, get the heck out of there because you're just being used. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I always sit there and say, if, if you go to see someone and they say, oh, my gosh, you have all this dark energy around you and you got to come back to me and you got to pay me this mm-hmm. much money and even more money and even more money, just look at them and smile and then just, like, run. Just yeah. never go back because, you know, that's not how it works. Everybody, you know, has all different colors, energies around them and stuff, but nobody, nobody can sit there and clear your energy for you. What they should be doing is sitting there saying, you know, you know, today might have been rough and you might have had some hard times, but, you know, maybe you need to sit there and try this. Nobody ever should sit there and tell you to keep coming back and keep coming back right. to get, you know, and, and increasing the price of it, too. It's just like, this is crazy. So, yeah. In in the early days of the X-Zone, we used to do a lot of of psychic fairs and uh, symposiums. And, I, I, you know, like, it, it amazed me to watch people come in and they always put the psychics in the middle of the event, yeah. you know, separated by a curtain and you'd have maybe 30, 40, 50 psychics. And I would watch people go, the same person go from psychic to psychic, to psychic, to psychic, to psychic, to psychic. And then yeah. they'd stay there a little longer and then they'd go home. And it finally dawned on me that, they were going from psychic to psychic until they heard the psychic tell them what they wanted to hear. Yes. And yes. once they heard that, they went home. Yep, and they were happy, and it's like, yeah. okay, I got what I... But meanwhile, you're sitting there, and you're seeing all these different energies, and, you know, some psychics will sit there, and they, they do go off your energy. Some mm-hmm. goes off of your birthday, astrology, all that. I don't know any of that stuff um, that way as a medium, um, I sit there and I just I don't have to be a part of that. There's astrologers out there; they right. can have fun with that. But you're right. I I go to a lot of events and um, it's the same thing. They'll go from one to another to another. And a lot of times when they come to see me, they'll they'll sit there and you know they'll be like, "Oh my God, this is great," but you are like really blunt. <laughs> and yeah. I'm going, well, yeah, you need to know these things, and you know you need to know it in the right way um, and stuff instead of giving you false hope on mm-hmm. something. You know. Yep. So tell me, what is vis- what is a visionary messenger? Ah, a visionary messenger. When um, it's when I sit there and I look at people. Well, mm-hmm. look at people, places, and things. Um, I just see colors. I see words. I see pictures. I see all these signs and symbols. So like. You know, wherever we go, we're like our own walking universe, and everything's all around people. So 
it, it doesn't matter um, what I look at, what I see. I see energies, and I see things and, and stuff. So as a visionary, um, I can see everything displayed before me. Um, and then when someone comes to see me, I'm a messenger. So that which is being shown to me and given to me, that's what I'm going to give them in their message. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of neat. In, in your opinion, after having doing this for 40 years, so I guess you started when you were two years old, um, what common mistakes do people make usually when contacting a, a medium? Uh, the usual mistake is sitting there and, and saying, um, you know, I just lost my brother and I really need to talk to him. That is one of the first ones, mm -hmm. okay? Because right there that lets the individual know that they lost a loved one, right. okay? My, my job, I have assistants to do all my emails. Um, I don't take phone calls unless, you know, it's a scheduled appointment. I don't want to talk to anybody ahead of time. I don't want to know who they are or anything right. else about them. Um, so that when they sit in front of me, my job is to tell them that they've lost someone, that someone is here, this is the messages that they want to give to them. So they tell them too much information. Another thing is when they sit there and say, oh, I have all these questions and I need to know about this, 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 this. Well, I'm sorry. That's that's my job to tell you. Right. So don't say anything. Please don't say anything to me. You let me just sit there and tell you because that's what you're here for and that's what my job is with you. Um, so they, they'll tell you that. Um, they want to give you, you know, all of their history. They mm -hmm. want to just keep talking. And where many times I've had to sit there and tell my clients, I really, like, thank you for that, but please, this, this is my job. Let me be quiet. You know, you be quiet and let me talk. So tell me. So, yeah, that's one of the first things. So tell so tell me, do you um, do you really see dead people? Oh, of course I do. You do? They're everywhere. Yes, um, I see them with my eyes wide open. So meaning that um, wherever I walk, whoever I come around, and even like in my own place, they're constantly walking all over the place. And um, so it's kind of cool. Sometimes they'll they'll show their whole self. Sometimes mm -hmm. just their face. Sometimes their body. Sometimes, and especially, like I say, during the holidays, they have such an awesome sense of humor because they will just um, have themselves lit up all around with just multicolored lights, you know. Um, so it's kind of neat. Sometimes you'll see just a side of them or something, right. but they're constantly everywhere. Um, so, so, yeah, so it's pretty cool, but sometimes it can be, like, very distracting, especially if I'm out shopping. And um, they're just walking around, and they're around their loved ones all the time. So uh, once they know that you can see them, they just start waving or they come up and they say, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. How are you doing? And um, they'll say, well, can you tell her? And I'm like, well, no, I don't exactly have permission to sit there and walk up to her and tell her anything. So that's another one of my big um, rules is you always have to have permission to, in order to tell somebody that their loved one is around them. So, but yeah, they're everywhere all the time. Why do they stick around? Why don't they just go to heaven and have a good time? Well, they are in heaven. They are having a good time. But you know, why do they come um, back? I believe, well, it's not really like they come back. Ooh. I mean, think about it. They're still living souls, and I believe that we all live simultaneously anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, But I think a lot of times the ones where you'll really feel them the most is when, um, when, when they just cross over. Uh, another time is when their loved one here in the physical is um, really hurting really bad or um, they were going through something and they just need some guidance they need some help they need to know that you know their mom is right there saying you know I got you I'm right here um, and I love you too so it's not like I mean their physical body is no longer here but um, their soul essence spirit is still all around um, and stuff so yeah are there any uh, Don't you I'm sorry go ahead there <laughs> Don't you believe that they're always around all the time? I mean, I do. That's just because I've grown up that way. Yeah. You know, I've grown up sitting there and talking to friends, and their their loved ones are, that are in spirit are sitting right beside them. So I'm having multi conversations all over the place. Yeah. No, I can honestly say that that I've never seen or heard anything that would mm -hmm. make me believe that they are around. However, I want to believe, so I'd like to see some proof. You know, if my right. if my dearly departed grandmother or my dearly departed Aunt May were to manifest in front of me when I regained consciousness, I would believe. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think because since I was so young, um, I'm just used to them yeah. standing around. 
You know, a lot of times when people say that they see our loved ones in spirit, what they're mm-hmm. actually doing is they're seeing the image within their mind's eye. Right. And, um, and, you know, those in spirit don't want to put fear in us. And I always tell everybody we have spirit guides and, and our loved ones in spirit, and then we have physical guides. And um, our, our loved ones will never tell us anything mean, rude, harmful, and negative and, um, because they understand what it's like to live here, and they, they just want to help guide us to get through it the best way you know, we can. So um, it's, it's like you have your own little team around you, you know, constantly sitting there and showing you, you know, you might be sitting there saying, man, I really need to sit there and um, find this tool, and you can't right. find it. And, uh, but they make sure you get to where you need to be in order to find it. So it's kind of neat. You know, so do do, do they work with our spirit guides? Do they work with our angels? Um, you know, how do they how do they divvy up the responsibilities of taking care of us? Um, you know, I don't even realize if it's divvying up. We do have spirit guides, yeah. okay? And my angelic wise ones are my guides. They're my team that's around me all the time. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they constantly work with me and guiding me and helping me. And then our our loved ones. I mean, they have their own set of things that they're doing, but when I know I need my mother yeah. um, and I need to, like, really, like, have that, like, um, love around me or that, that question thing that I can only mm-hmm. talk to her about, I know that she's right there. So it's not like they all sit there and, and say, okay, well, you go, and now you go, and now you go. Right. With me, it's a constant. They're, they're around us all the time. So um, I think that just like here, you know, when we were talking about our grandchildren, Mm -hmm. you know, my grandchildren have a huge network of individuals around and all of us step in when we need to be, you know, and and then we're all there together. It's like craziness. (laughs) So, um, and I think it's the same way. So when you look at it, you have to look at how physical guides are in your life. Physical guides are your parents, your grandparents, your aunts, uncles, um, siblings, coworkers, teachers, acquaintances. How are the people in your everyday life how are you interacting with them? And that's the same way our guides, our angels, and our loved ones, you know, work with us too. Is, is there any way that we can be taught how to better communicate with the other side and how we can be more attuned to, the, to their presence? Well, um, there's always ways, and, and a lot of it is development. But the first thing is being open to the experience mm-hmm. um, and sitting there and, and understanding there's no fear attached to them. Like I said, they're, they're, they're a loving energy. They don't have this heaviness of, you know, um, life as we know it right yeah. now. We have, we have anger, fear, and all that stuff. So if what, the first thing it is is opening us to it. Then you're going to look at, um, you know, you can say the meditation, right? I always say there's three keys. There's prayer, meditation, and journaling. And when you sit there and meditate, you are, you are allowing yourself to let go of, you know, the everyday thoughts and, and stuff. Um, but there's so many different exercises to do that people will sit there and show you, and we sit there in my classes and do um, meditation. And then it's just because you have to learn how to um, focus. You have to learn that um, you have to take your emotions out of it, you know, and um, – and you have to be willing. And you have to be willing to sit there and say, these are things mm-hmm. that I really know and I accept. Because think about it. When your eyes look at anything, you're actually looking at everything physical. You know that's a couch. You know that's a desk. You know that's yeah. a wall. You know that's a lamp. So you're just used to that. When you sit there and really um, start relaxing a little bit more and open up to it and use some, I guess we could always say as everybody else, use meditation to let go of physical things, then you're going to start um, being ready. So how does communicating with the departed loved ones work when some people believe in reincarnation? Is that person in two places at once? Let's say Aunt May has been passed for 30 years. She comes back as whoever in another country or another dimension, another, another planet. Who right. knows? But she's reincarnated. How is it that I would be able to communicate with my Aunt May? Well, you can still communicate through your Aunt May because think about it. We're all a divided aspect, right? So um, as being a divided aspect, we can be simultaneously everywhere at the same time. So even if um, our dearly departed sit mm-hmm. there and decided to reincarnate, yeah. there's a divided aspect of our soul that's still you know, there that we can sit there and connect up to. Um, <clears throat> I do believe in reincarnation. Uh, the one thing that always gets me is when, you know, everybody's like, well, you know, um, 
my grandfather just passed away, but we have a new baby that's being born any time, yeah. and this is going to definitely be him. And I kind of crack up um, because it's to me it's very rare to sit there and have another one come, you know, have a, your loved one come back into the same family. But, right. you know, we're all a divided aspect and um, of our soul. So, yes, our soul can be everywhere, anytime. Um, think about it sometimes. You know, some of the shows that you talk about and stuff, it's really cool because – um, I believe in simultaneously, like I said, living in all different, you know, um, lifetimes at the same time. Anytime I can connect up into one lifetime or another. So um, it's the same thing with our loved ones when they pass away. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. What it's is? Neat, isn't yeah, it? I, th- I think so. I think so. And, it, and there's a lot of food for thought. And how many mm-hmm. how many conversions have you seen in the past? where someone comes to you as a non-believer and bang with what you tell them they believe uh i would have to say at least 99.9 yeah. percent yeah um and believe me i've had some really uh tough clients mm-hmm. um which i love because they just sit there and not a thing and then um you know once i sit there and start going uh by the time they leave yes I um, they have that emotion going, and they sit there and say, "I would have never believed this unless I hadn't seen it, you know, in person." So right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Is there any specific question you get more than at other times when people come to see you? Um, let's see. I, they always want to know about um, relationships, right? Money. Mm-hmm. Um, they want to know, you know, about their their career and their future and stuff. And I think, um, I think, well, I get some really interesting questions. You know, a lot of them uh, arrive and they want me to tell them that, you know, their their marriage is over and they can move on. Um, a lot of them, <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, I'm serious, and uh, that's not, you know, necessarily always, um, you know, the outcome of it. Um, but I think the biggest one is, is always um, their job, you know, how their job is. Right. And, um, and then a, and a lot of single individuals, too, wanting to know, you know, if they're ever going to have a soulmate. You know, so uh, that comes around a lot, too. Has there, has there ever been a time when you're communicating with someone on the other side, you're asked a question by someone sitting in front of you, and the answer that comes back just knocks you on your keister like you weren't expecting this it's an answer from left field (laughs) um well when they get a little bit more personal Uh uh when a loved when a loved one yes when they get a little bit more personal um they want to show something a little bit more intimate yeah you know and um where i just crack up but otherwise i think i've i've basically seen heard since just about everything just about everything. I haven't had anything that I know of mm-hmm. in the last ten years that have just like you know blown me away. So, um, so yeah, so nothing like that. But they mm-hmm. will tell about intimate, personal details, and that's the hardest one because <laughs> you know you start turning around the face going, "Excuse me, this is none of my business." Okay, this is between the two of you. Okay, but I will tell them this, you know. And then the the recipient sitting in front of me will yeah. say, "Oh my God, that is them," because yes, that was his hairy rear end. You know, so, <laughs> oh, my gosh, yes, there's so many different ones like that that it just, like, cracks you up. So, and it's, and it's really cool to be mm-hmm. a part of that, too, you know, to give them. I, I guess yeah. it would be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. I, I had to throw that one in there. Sorry, I had to throw that no one problem. in there. Um, I, did have, I did have a client one time sit there and ask me, you know, something intimate that they used to do um, uh-huh. when they were involved together. And um, i that's when I just had to, like, take a minute to, like, okay, look, look, I can't believe you're even asking this to begin with. <laughs> but um, <laughs> how do I describe this with, like, you know, not being all, like, eh. Yeah. So, but, yeah, they will ask um, intimate questions like that. I, I, I guess <laughs> one of the ways would be, you know, the person asks you, how do I know it's really – her that you're talking to and you come back and she says well you you still have the whip marks on your back yeah or you know it's a little bit more um oh god this is horrible a little bit more pimply 
you know, someone had or someone really had a lot of flatulence, um, you know, during those times and stuff. Yeah. <sighs> you know, so. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's when they're just like flat out going, all right, you got this. This is like right there. That's them. All right. Yeah. Does, does grandmother have any questions for me? Uh, yes. Do you still fart a lot? Oh, <laughs> Talk about blowing you away. Um, but it is. Yeah. It is. It must and be. And they will get personal on it. I, I would imagine, because you're a mother, uh, that communicating with a young one on the other side for a parent must be rather hard. Um, a lot, it's, it's devastating. Yeah. Uh, it really is. I think that's where the most heartfelt comes in because um, I, can, I feel their emotions mm-hmm. and there's so much love uh, and stuff. And so there's many a times where I end up having to have the tissues, you oh, know, gosh. and and wiping my eyes away and um and at the same time it's such a beautiful experience you know um but my heart always goes out to um to these uh, mothers uh you know it, it's just something i would never even never even pray for yeah. um but then to sit there and see the peace that comes over them you know because the first question they just always have to make sure of is, yeah. is they're okay and was i good enough mom oh, and geez. you know and was this my fault? Um, so it's just that, that's it's very heartbreaking. Yeah. And um, but at the same time, being able to like allow this little little one to come in and and just talk about everything that's gone right. on and the birthdays and this happening and that happening and seeing them light up um, when they leave. And those are the ones that um, I always take the extra time. You know, um, they don't leave until mm-hmm. uh, their little one, you know, um, has finished you know talking and that they're okay too. Bless you for doing that. Yeah. That is so wonderful. Oh. Oh, you, right. you and I, my dear friend, have to take our first commercial break at the bottom of the hour. Okay. Exonation, my special guest this hour, is Adele Marie. Her website is www.angelicones. I'm sorry, angelicwiseones.com. That's angelicwiseones.com. And Adele Marie and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break. With the news as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free 1-800-610-7035. Email X-Zone at XZoneRadioTV.com on all social media sites, X-Zone Radio. And you can listen to the X-Zone 24-7-365 at www.XZoneRadioTV.com. Once again, Adele Marie's website, www.XZoneRadioTV.com. AngelicWiseOnes.com and Adele and I will be back on the other side as we continue investigating the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here in the X-Zone with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our broadcast center live and around the world in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. The King has just announced the release, no pun intended, of the latest book of comedy, The Endearing Fart by Eileen Dover, noted fartologist. The Endearing Fart from our butt does it dark. Without it we'd all suffer inside. So let it be, release it with glee, it's not comfy or easy to hide. The social norm would have us conform to withholding our gas for decorum. I'll not be a martyr, but rather a farmer. I'll risk being thought of a moron. Uh But noisy but free, come fart with me. We'll not be shy or unyielding. A smelly toot? Who gives a hoot? It's natural, healthy, good feeling. The enduring fart is the perfect gift just for about anyone. Uh Buy now at tinyurl.com forward slash to buy now. Jesus came back now and insisted that we listen to him. 
How would the world be different if Christians really followed the Gospels? For 2,000 years, we've been practicing a religion. Now it's finally time to get it right. Read Liberating Jesus, new from Roberta Grimes. Meet the Jesus you never knew. Roberta uses afterlife evidence and biblical analysis to prove that Jesus is exactly right. Learning the lessons that he came to teach is the reason we are born at all. Roberta says he has come back now to insist that we actually listen to him so we can begin to use his teachings to unite and transform the world. Liberating Jesus on Amazon, October 1st, and then wherever books are sold. Jesus has the answers, and it's not too late. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Good real estate websites are not just about showing listings, but offering visitors valuable information about neighborhoods, market statistics, tips, and personal insights. Luckily, you will find that on Roost, but you won't on many other real estate websites in Budapest. That's why we created Roost. Roost is a website with tailored results for the foreign investor, curated by Hungarian-loving expats who found their home abroad and decided to Roost in Budapest. Let Roost help you get started on the right foot. Whether you intend to live, work, play, retire, or simply invest abroad, Roost offers all types of properties in Budapest, from affordable studios to luxury homes. From neighborhood insights like where to grab a great coffee or how to buy property, our team of local experts can answer your questions and speak to the direct concerns of a foreign investor. Buying foreign property is an exciting and complex adventure. It can also be very time-consuming and costly if you don't have the best information and resources at hand. Roost provides professional real estate services and assistance to an international clientele of foreign property investors and rental apartment owners in Budapest. For more information on Roost, visit their website at www.roost.co. That's www.rooste.co. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. Ever wondered if your advertising dollar is really working for you? If your ad would have been here, you and more than 4 million people would be listening to it right now. Contact ads at exxoneradiotv.com.
Welcome back, everyone. Adele Murray is our special guest. Her website is angelicwiseones.com. Um, after you've done a, a reading, I know we talked about uh, doing a communication with a mother or a parent with a young child that has crossed. Do you ever, you, you must feel very tired and drained. And how do you protect yourself from preventing something negative coming through you into this side and residing in you. Aha. Everybody seems to always want to sit there and uh, um, ask those questions. One, I don't um, I don't get tired after mm-hmm. I do a session. Actually, I, I get a little bit more energized, and I don't believe anybody should, get a t- um, should be tired when they finish any of this type of work. Um, I do do my prayers um, constantly all the time. I'm always in a state of prayers, and I meditate from two to four hours per day. Um, I'm always asking for the light of the Holy Spirit to always be around me. So, right. you know, God is God is my um, God is my source. So, um, but you should never be tired. If you are tired, that's because uh, you're really not um, sitting there and doing any of those things. You're sitting there and you're putting too much energy into it. Everything that I get should not be me really like working over hard. It just should all just flow out. Um, and stuff, and that's what a messenger is always about. What do you do when, yeah. when, when people just won't accept what you're saying? And I, I'm sure you've had people who say, "No, you're wrong. That can't be right. Uh, she, she, she must not be getting my question." What, what do you do when they go into self denial? Um, you know, it, it's perfectly okay and it's perfectly mm-hmm. normal. But um, when I have a client sit across from me, I always sit there and, and say to them, um, I'm always right. You're wrong. Um, I'm wrong if I'm not getting it right to be able to give it right to you. But otherwise, um, they're always going to be wrong. <laughs> so, um, but it just, it's getting them to understand and walking them through the process. You know, and explaining or or answering as many questions as I can for them, you know, mm-hmm. for them to be comfortable uh, and stuff. So, um, I don't know. I just, I love skeptics, you know, and, and, it's their, and it's their right to be a skeptic. I'm a huge skeptic. Right. I mean, I've traveled, for years I traveled everywhere, and I, I went and had appointments with this person or that person. I'll even, when I'm traveling now, stop when I see one of those palm reader things and um, just go in. You know, in this way, because I like to also share, and um, if I find somebody that's really good, then I'm going to sit there and share with my students or anyone else. If if somebody's living in Indiana and I think they're awesome and I got mm-hmm. clients up there and they would like to learn something, yes, if this person's good, I'm going to share with them. But um, So, yeah, so I'm skeptic, too. I, truthfully, honestly, I've never found anybody that could actually do what I do um, or actually read me. So uh, so I understand it. I'm, I'm also on that other side, too. At times, you know. What about common misconceptions when people go to visit a medium or a channel? What do you think the top three misconceptions are? Uh, when they come to see myself uh, or someone else, so you. The, the me. The misconception um, is that I'm going to tell them when they're going to die. You know, uh, one. Because that's something I'll never do. I don't. I mean, even though I can see, sense, and feel death with sure. individuals, it's not my message to give. So that's one misconception. Um, the other uh, misconception is that I'm going to um, sit there and be like everybody else they've ever met, and you know, try to put some fear in them or right. tell them you desperately got to come back and see me. Um, another misconception is that uh, I actually love all of them. You know, and sometimes yeah. people really don't understand love or compassion, and it, and it's to really have a good time too, you know. Um, but I will be very blunt and honest with you at the same time. Sometimes you're not going to want to hear what I have to say, so I'm not here just to, like we said earlier, tell you what you want to know, but it's what you need to know. So tell me, when channeling or receiving messages on things that are going on in the world, do they ever mm-hmm. frighten you? You know, um, I've been channeling what seems like forever and um i see a lot of things that i know people are never going to really want to um hear want to know or anything else like that Mm -hmm. and it doesn't i've gotten to the point where it doesn't frighten me because i know when i'm um channeling this in uh that it's something that we need to know what's going on in the world so it's just to give you more knowledge 
Um, you know, years ago, I remember doing a channeling session and uh, where I let everybody know that, you know, this world, um, the United States will say, uh, is headed towards uh, a third world country. And that was a good 10 years ago where everybody just started freaking out and they're like, wait a minute, you know, come on, um, stop scaring me. And it's like, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to make you knowledgeable. You know, let's open our eyes now and see what's going on. And, um, and, and when it comes to channeling, too, I know you remember this years and years ago. Uh, somebody was talking about this mothership that was going to be coming to the earth. Oh, yeah. And, um, oh, yeah. Remember that? Sure do. And um, I was on, you know, the, I love bloggers, and they had me on all their stuff. And I was on a couple of forums and on one website where, that always, you know, posted my work. And I was the only person out of all these other top people out there that says we're not going to have a mothership come here, and um, there's no way it's going to be happening, and this is why, and blah, blah, blah. And, oh, my gosh, people were trying to beat me up saying, well, who are you because so-and-so said so, and all these, so you know, yeah. okay, well, whatever. And um, that ship never appeared, did it? No, so ma'am, I, it never you know, did. It never did. So, um you know, they show me things that happen around the world all the time, and, um, you know, uh, it's to sit there and really look at it and see what's going on and why it's going on, and, and there's a voice behind it, and um, it is to sit there and let us let us know ahead of time so we can be knowledgeable. Um, with all the conversations that you've had with those on the other side, what, can, what do they tell you about dying and what happens after you're dead? You know, uh, there's so many different um, transitioning. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not always that light that you see that's, you know, this tunnel right. um, and stuff. But, you know, it's it really is more of a beautiful thing. A lot of them sit there and they're amazed because they're not into this in this life. And then they're coming, their loved ones sitting in front of me, they're coming in. They're like, well, you know, um, it's, it's just beautiful. Um, you're sitting there and uh, it's just like walking you know, to another room, um, basically, and it's just all your loved ones in there, and it's just a huge party, and it's, there's no, um, condemnation, mm -hmm. there's no anybody saying you're a horrible person, uh, and stuff, that's reserved for us here, that's a, like, that's a, a physical, you know, thing, right. and, um, but it, it, they do get to see their loved ones, and there's no book uh, that's sitting there waiting to sit there, and somebody saying, oh, you know, you did this, this, and life. So there's but no religious. Is, is, so there's no religious dogma. Well, there's no religious dogma per se, as you know, everybody's drilled in mm -hmm. their head um, and stuff. But there is um, a point where you're sitting there and you are looking at things that had gone on in life and how you actually sat there and talked to one person and might not have been, you know, nice like that bully, right. you know, and um, and you get to sit there and see what actually happened to them in their life because of those negative words you gave to them, whether it came out good or whether it came out bad. Um, so, and you process that yourself. You're, you're not sitting there and being yelled at or thrown anywhere else and, um, and stuff. But it, and it's a, it's a beautiful healing process. So, but I will say that, you know, when it comes to the religious dogmas, if that's when you're going to transition, if that's where you think you're going to go from, to one place or another, um, it's almost like that's your first impression until you start seeing your loved ones. You know, I know when my mother transitioned, um, it was hospice there in, in her, my dad, you know, their house. Yeah. And, um, and I could just sit there and see her mother, and I could see uh, the Blessed Mother there, and I could see her father and, you know, um, her grandmother and stuff. And they were all just standing there, and they were holding her hands and, you know, assisting her uh, and stuff. So it's just a really beautiful process. It's nothing to, to like fear. I know I had a near death experience one time, and I was it was a hit and run, and I was just like sitting on the side of the mountain with um, Jesus and talking, and we were talking about things. When I realized, oh my gosh, wait a minute, I'm not supposed to be. I thought I was back there, yeah. and um, you know, so it, you get to see things that you have done in life, and and you get to see things which your loved ones endure in life. But it's nothing to fear. Um, nothing to fear at all. It's just really more beautiful than anything. So why do we want to come back? Why do we want to be reincarnated if everything is so beautiful <laughs> when we go? And, you know, there, you know, you look at this life and you say, oh, my God, I need a good rest now, you know. My wife keeps right, on saying, yeah. my wife tells me, you need more sleep. I said, I'm going to get enough sleep when I'm dead. There's so much I've got to do now. <laughs> um, 
you know, it's so cool because when we're here, we, we are so earthly. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have all these issues all around us. And when we transition, um, and we'll say going home, um, we don't necessarily, we know we went through those experiences, but we don't sit there and hang on to them and, and remember the full effect of them. Uh, we also have soul contracts and those soul contracts and life learning lessons, you know, for everything that there's an emotional issue or anything else out there, that's what we come back and our soul wants to keep learning it, wants to keep getting knowledge. And so we're going to come here and we're going to experience it. And what better place to experience it as a very dense um, energy planet of Mother Earth, right? So um, we're just continually evolving our soul. And then we have soul contracts with others. Um, just like you and your wife, you had a soul contract uh, coming into this lifetime and sitting there saying, we're going to learn about, um, we'll just use love. And, um, and then society, the, where you grow up for your, through your parents, mm-hmm. your family, and you know, teachers, and school and life as you go, um, that's what's teaching you the lessons on love and, um, and how you, you know, what it is that you're seeking with love. So when the two of you see each other, you've come to a, a beautiful um, marriage of um, understanding and growing and learning and um, to bring that love there. So it's a life lesson with it. That life lesson that we were talking, just talking about and, and mm-hmm. you know, love at first sight, is this all part of predestiny? See, I, I, um, I don't see a lot of that stuff uh, the way others do. Mm-hmm. Um, I do believe in full contracts with one another and um, I do believe that once we're born in this lifetime, we're yeah. not just learning about death, we're learning about love. So what, what so, would be the um, difference between, you know, signing a soul contract and predestiny? Uh, so, well, it's kind of like the same, except for mm-hmm. that, you know, your soul contract, if I have this with you, right. my destiny can change any time according to life society's conditioning. Right. So um, if I'm going to sit there and I know... Uh, my destiny is going to be a star out into the world and mm-hmm. I'm going to um, be acting or whatever else it is. I might come to a point in my life, though, that I'm, I'm experiencing something and um, which sits there and takes me on another path. Okay, so I might sit there and say, you know what, I'm not really into that right there. But uh, what I have learned is the fact that I'm going to be a star in helping other people get through cancer or, you know, sit there and and come up with a foundation to sit there and help somebody else. They're still a star, but it's a total different way now, right? So um, destiny is a little bit different to me than what everybody else thinks it is. But we we were destined to talk, you and I. (laughs) There you go. Exo Nation, our guest this hour is Adele Marie. Her website is angelicwiseones.com. Adele, what's it like to be you, to see what you see and know everything that you know? Um, I've gotten to the point in life where it's pretty cool. Uh, I've learned to sit there and to um, accept things and Mm -hmm. understand what goes on. Um, I'm just like any other mother out there. I've coached, you know, softball for my girls when they were growing up and stuff but it is different when you're sitting there and you're out and you're talking to people and they say so what do you do and I tell them um, I talk to dead people Uh, they kind of just like a couple reactions one is like ooh who do you see around me two um, it would be like okay and they turn around and walk the other way Um, so it's, it's people not really understanding that I'm just like you or anybody else um and I really don't want to go around reading you. You know, I could right. care less what you are doing in your life or anything else. Um, but when you need me, I'm right here, you know, to help. So, uh, but when I do walk around, I get to see everybody's garbage. I get to see everybody's love. I get to see everybody's stuff all around them, you know. So, um, it's kind of interesting. Like when, when people are upset, they just. You know, they get their anger and emotions and they throw it down. And to me, I'm walking. As I walk down a sidewalk, I'm walking through all these, everybody's junk and their emotions. And I just, it's all like piled up like garbage everywhere. Can you, see, can you see a big difference when you're walking around uh, through everybody's junk? For example, is there more junk that you see, negative emotions that you see, during other times of the year, through certain times of the year compared to other times of the year? For example, around Christmas, is there less junk and less hate? <laughs> no. No, I... That's when there's... Um, no, it, it's, 
I, I love that question because, no, it's no different. Um, people are still having arguments. They're still fighting with their families. They're still um, trying to get that promotion, or they're working themselves like crazy. So right. um, I think that the only time that might be a little bit lesser mm-hmm. is when spring starts coming. Really? You know, because, uh, yeah, I think people are a little feeling a little bit more light in their step. So um, they're not throwing things down and around as much. They're they're looking at hope and they're they're thinking, oh my gosh, this is a freshness right now. So, um, but holidays are usually the biggest like field of junk that I have to walk through. So, would a religious person have the same amount of junk that a non-religious person like yours truly would have? Of course. Really? Of course. I think they. Um, I think that there's so much when it comes to religion, there's so many rules um, that they make sure that they try to adhere to, but at the same time, um, they don't, you know, and um, so it's, it's, it's going to be the same either way. Um, But I think that a spiritual individual or, or a person that really is a good hearted person, Mm -hmm. um, they, they don't necessarily have to go to church all the time, but they want the best for somebody right. and everything. I think they have less junk um, because they're dealing with it than one who's religious, you know, that's really, really strong in their religion. So when, um, when, when you're looking out and you're seeing all these dead people, do you see people from the, the ancient times? Do you see cavemen? Do you see North American natives? Do you see people dressed in the 20s garbs how do you see them oh they're through all eras of time really, yeah? all through walks of time um and that's that's like the the coolest thing to see now i don't i have, you know i don't really get into like cavemen and i haven't seen them around that much um but i know like if i travel from here to the beach where i live mm-hmm. i will see a lot of like um carriage you know and horses right. and people riding the carriages and stuff um the Lumerians, I'll see them. I'll see Atlanteans. Um, we'll see what people call the Greys and, and everything. Uh, you get to see Lady uh, um, in the, the times of Antoinette, uh, like that, George Washington, um, you know, different, yeah, all, all different eras. And it's just uh, pretty neat. And they're all, you know, it depends, too, on somebody's energy. Um, a lot of times if I'm standing in a group, and if they're really um, knowledgeable about, you know, history and, mm-hmm. um, you know, the poli- politics, how the wor- world works, you'll see a lot of the founding fathers around them. So it's kind of neat to, to see that. Um, then you sit there and see individuals who are really, they're, they're hiding their issues um, behind, like, alcohol or um, something like that. And, you know, I might see someone like Marilyn Monroe. Um, uh, with or without, very, with or without uh, Jack Kennedy, <laughs> without okay um, and stuff, yeah. So um, it's all going to um, sit there and depend where I'm at, where I'm going, and you know who's around and stuff that these uh, individuals come around. Tell us about. We've got about uh, two and a half minutes left. Tell me about your okay. courses. My courses. Mm-hmm. Um, I teach a spiritual mediumship development course. And that is for individuals that um, are looking for something more in this, you know, whole type of world here with spirit. And they've had, they might have had an experience. They need to understand what it was. They might have this, like, wonderful feeling that they want to work with the angels. Right. Um, They just have a lot of questions. And uh, so they come into class, and I start teaching them the do's, the don'ts, the truths, the myths, myths. you know what's false and what's not false and i teach them responsibility and it is very responsible what you have to be when you do this work and um and i think that's my biggest thing with all of them and i'm a very hard teacher because you know no you just don't walk up to anybody and just say blah 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 um you have to be responsible with it and you have to be respectful with it and um so i do that i teach all different types types of workshops uh which are a lot of fun to do and i do um galleries and that's the same you would see like John Edward. He, you have all these people in the audience and mm-hmm. stuff, and I just walk up and um, I just start handing out the messages and letting people know that their loved ones are there or what's going on with them. So, um, and then I write and uh, and I love teaching people. So I love putting everything in book format for them. Adele, what is your message for the Exo Nation tonight? What words of wisdom do you have for them? 
Um, for the exo nations, I think that uh, the biggest one is love. And the biggest one is to sit there and understand really what love is and to not allow all these fear-based um, things coming in. Look for the reality. Look for the truth and um, what resonates with you because uh, we are having, we're in a huge surge of energy with a lot of things going on right now. And if you're feeling it and if it's going into your gut, um, then that's the truth that you stick with. So, uh, and I think it's beautiful for the fact that everybody now wants to sit there and share so much. So, um, but it is about love and, and to loving oneself. So when you love uh, yourself, yeah. then you're going to have the truth. So, yes. Adele Murray, I want to thank you ever so much for joining us tonight. It's been a great pleasure talking to you. I hope that we have the pleasure of speaking to you again in the future so that you can help I, spread the word. Oh, Rob, thank you. It's my pleasure. Take care of yourself. And Exonation. Nation, Adele Murray has been our guest this hour. www.angelicwiseones.com Dot com. That's www.angelicwiseones.com. I'll be back on the other... I sound, I sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger, don't I? I'll be back on the other side of this news break with some commercials of our fine advertisers here on the Exxon as we continue investigating the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology right here from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada on the Exxon Broadcast Network. Starcom Radio Network, Digital Satellite Network, and Digital Broadcast Network. Don't go away, Exo Nation. I'll be back. After all, this is truly a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. Eastern until 12 a.m. Eastern. And you can listen to us live and our refeeds at www.exoneradiotv.com. Don't go away now. 